Hey all, this is Nick. I'm just going to introduce this video. I'm just a marketing guy. I'm not really DevOps or a Linux engineer or anything like that. So this tutorial is intended to help walk people through setup of Nextcloud in case they run into any kind of errors or anything. Everything in this video is timestamped and I have all the links in the description down below. If you like this type of content, please leave a thumbs up. Enjoy. Today we're going to talk about setting up online cloud storage on your own. There's been growing interest, at least as far as I can see, among my friend group in de-googling to maintain privacy. Some people just don't like the fact that people are observing them. Other people are concerned that Google and some of these other companies are making a buck off of us without providing adequate services. So we're going to go through how to maintain some of the convenience of something like a Google service. And there's a bunch of tutorials out there on how to set up Nextcloud. I'm going to pull up a couple of them and I'm going to kind of explain what's going on with them as we go through and do the setup. What I found is that the tutorials that are out there are very good capsules of how to set up something like a Nextcloud at that given moment in time. But they're not very good explainers on exactly what you're doing. So I'll just pull up a quick example of this um, just so that you can have a look. There is a tutorial here from a group called PC Mac. And there's a guy that does the primary voiceover for this, but it sounds like he has an entire staff behind him. Most of what he has in his video are literal step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the install of, in this case, Open Media Vault, which he's using as a hard drive manager and Nextcloud. And when I was going through this and trying to follow his instructions, I ended up having to go through like a dozen different sites because I didn't know what was going on and exactly what the philosophy was behind this. He, in this video and instruction set, is using Open Media Vault, and based upon what I understand and the difficulties that I've been having is Open Media Vault, he's using it as a hard drive manager. So when he turns on his Raspberry Pi, Open Media Vault will open up and actually turn on the hard drive. I thought this was silly because you just modify your fstab file in Linux and it takes up a matter of barely even kilobytes of instructions and your computer will mount your hard drive on startup. Unfortunately, when I tried to do this on my own, I found that the fstab file would only sometimes mount the hard drive, which meant that uh, with Nextcloud, it doesn't support virtual paths, so you can't set up like say a 16 gigabyte hard disk on a Raspberry Pi and then have Nextcloud store all of your files on a two terabyte external hard drive that is mirrored to another hard drive, backed up and then backed up to the cloud. It just, it won't work that way um, because it doesn't support virtual paths. So I thought the next best thing was, hey, we're gonna mount an external hard drive and then we'll just use that as a folder. Great in theory, if I could get fstab to reliably mount the hard drive, I couldn't. So I think the Open Media Vault setup is probably a good option since it has presumably cron scripts set up that if it fails during mounting that the system will actually continually try to mount that hard drive so that eventually it will mount for you and you'll be able to store stuff on that drive. Now of course I could probably do this on my own using the cron table and using fstab and then both of them would back each other up. But as far as understanding what I've done and coming back and being able to reconfigure the system later, it's easier for me just to spend the few hundred gigabytes and presumably rather large system resources 
on Open Media Vault since I have a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. So I don't need to go super stripped down. The rest of this is set up on basically how to set up Nextcloud. And one of the interesting things about this is it didn't really seem to matter what order I did any of these steps in, whether I was setting up the database or installing the PHP or anything along those lines. I'm going to set up Open Media Vault later. For me right now, getting Nextcloud set up is the most important part. So when you first get your Raspberry Pi, the first thing you're going to want to do is set up your Raspberry config. And you're just going to do a command like that. Most important thing, you're exposing this to the outside internet. So you want to make sure to change your password. In this case, I have an extremely long password that's not possible to break through a dictionary attack and is too long for a brute force attack to get it taken down in any reasonable period of time. Chances are I'm going to notice if someone's trying to hack my internet because it's going to slow me down. My internet's not really that fast, but it is fast enough to do some cloud storage hosting. So you'll do that. You'll set up your Raspberry config. You'll also want to set up your hard drive. Otherwise, when you're trying to try type in commands, when you try and select a pipe like that, it's going to do a tilde because it's based on a British keyboard. As long as you know that command, you will be able to figure it out if you're savvy enough to have purchased a Raspberry Pi. Chances are you're technical enough. He has this set up for Apache 2. Actually, that's a, that's a good place to start. Let's start by installing Apache, Apache 2. So to do this, you have to do sudo. And I always call it sudo just because... I read too phonetically. And we, you don't need the apt get. That's kind of old school. Everything is just managed through apt now. So we're going to sudo apt install Apache 2. And go ahead and click yes. If you don't want to click yes after you type in Apache 2, you can just do space and then dash Y, and it will automatically accept any hard drive space that apt requests access to. And then they're asking to install MariaDB and libapache mod PHP 7.0. And this is what I mean by these instructions needing a little bit of clarification. So if you look here, Apache 2, Apache 2 is current. If for whatever reason you're doing this when Apache 3 is out, Apache 2 may be deprecated. You may not be able to download that package. So you're not going to want to do Apache 2 uh, in that particular case. It's still current for me. But you see here, libapache2 mod PHP 7.0. We're not on Apache 7.0, we're on Apache 7.3 plus. We might be on, on Apache 7.5 for all I know, but I know that Apache 7.3 works for my version of Nextcloud. So I'm going to modify that so it actually shows up as PHP 7.3. And now I should be able to install MariaDB. Now once MariaDB is set up, we're going to be able to configure our database. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you everything that I'm doing here because everything that I do in command line is going to show up on the video. And I actually plan on using this system for production in this case. So I don't want to show you my passwords. But there's other instructions out there. Let's just go with PC Mac and see what his configuration is for his database. I ended up having to reference multiple, multiple instruction tutorials to get everything working. All right, for, so this looks like the section where you can set up the user in the server.
So the, this is the instruction that I'm talking about as far as not being able to show you what I'm doing. So when I do this, my SQL u root p, this is my SQL user root password. So as a user, or as a root user, I'm going to be able to set up, I assume, a new user in the database using my system root permissions as long as I use my root password. For this tutorial, I'm using XC. I should probably actually blur that out because I don't want you to know any of my usernames. But for XC, I have my password and I can just copy and paste this into PuTTY. I did need to set it up so shift Control v will do my pasting for me. All right, and we're in the database. It looks like they want to set up a database next NCDB for Nextcloud database. I'm going to go ahead and name it something a little bit different that I know works, but I'm not going to show you what I'm going to do on this part. So So I'm just going to do create database and then Make sure to close off all of your statements with a semicolon. I always forget and then I press enter and then SQL takes me to the next line. Something that you can know about SQL though, it doesn't read return keys. So if you do go to the next line, just make sure to drop in the semicolon and everything will be just fine. And now we're gonna create a user The local host is important here. So you're gonna name someone, you're gonna name the user, and then you're gonna do localhost. Let's see. I think I have this all written down so I can just copy and paste what I have in here. What I have written at localhost is correct, identified by, and this is what I mean by not sharing your passwords your password here. So whatever I'm typing in here for my username, I'm also typing in my password and all of this is public if I show you, which I do not want to. Make sure to hit that semicolon before enter. And so far it says query okay, zero rows affected. 0.001 seconds, so everything looks great. But what you've got here for the next command is, you can see all privileges on ncdb, so that's just the database name dot whatever you decided to name it. In this case, case, I decided to name it not something too unusual, but then dot star. Oh, lost track there. And then two. whatever your username is at localhost and then semicolon and my query showing up is okay too much away so query okay zero rows affected that's what you should see after every command if you don't see that you need to go back to the drawing board now we can just go back to flush Privileges, make sure that hit that semicolon. All right. Now I should be able to exit. And then I'm going to clear so that I can bring this back for you. This part is, it takes a little bit to wrap your mind around it. You just need to create a database because when you install MariaDB, it doesn't necessarily create a database for you. Then you need to add a user to that database which is going to be important because you're going to need to set up Nextcloud on your local system. 
this next part, install Nextcloud. So it looks like these instructions are actually up to date with uh, with 7.3. Do this. And I'm just going to show you with the Y switch how this works. Oh, you know, since we in, since we set up Apache 2, let me check this. 192.168.1.8 so when we installed Apache 2, when we go to this website, this is currently on port 80, which is standard for any website. I'm actually going to change that later because port 80 is blocked on my particular ISP. But we have this command right here, sudo apt install Apache 2, PHP MySQL, PHP 3, Everything here you can see is version 3, and I added the Y switch as I promised so that we don't have to type in Y to approve accessing disk space. You can see I'm hopping around tutorials a bit. That's just because once you've done this enough times, you realize that every tutorial out there has most of the stuff, but the person who wrote the tutorial knows certain things and they come as second nature to them, but they don't necessarily explain their logic in what they've written down or they may not explain it in the video. Once you install that, you're going to need to restart Apache 2. Looking good, looking good. We're actually a good way there. Alright, so that folder Looks like it exists. Now, he, this person has curl download Nextcloud. This is an outdated version. This is also kind of important. You see he has the curl and then the database. This is going to get you a zip file of Nextcloud. But this might not work because this might be an out of date Nextcloud zip file. And then he's got the switch here for unzipping that specific file. What we're going to do is just show you that there's multiple ways to get to the top of the hill here. Copy link address. So since I'm in, the, in my target folder which is var www.html, I'm going to do wget instead. And then I'm going to, nope, that's instructions. I don't want instructions. I want this. Copy link address. Now you'll see down in the bottom left, it's 20.0.1.zip. So this isn't a tarball. So the switch won't work if, if you use that specific link, which is probably why I was having trouble before. Because I was trying to unzip with a tarball without paying attention to the zip, which is where I found out about this wzip command. Permissions denied. That means I don't have super admin permissions. This time it'll work just fine. So now that the download is finished, we can do ls, see what's in the directory. You can see you've got nextcloud and we're just going to unzip that. Except I need to do it with sudo permissions, of course. Now we can go ahead and make directory. Nextcloud, from what I remember, automatically creates a data folder 
once it starts up. If it doesn't, it might give you an error if you don't have proper permissions set. We're just going to go ahead and follow that instruction from PC Mac and create that that data directory. And the reason we're going to make it is because sometimes in the past when I've set up Nextcloud, I've had issues where it starts throwing an error and it's because it doesn't have permissions to create the data folder, let alone manipulate it in the, uh, in the HTML folder. So that's what I believe this command is for is to make sure that www data has permissions in this folder. That's what the next two commands are. I might be wrong. I am a little bit of a normie when it comes to graphic user interfaces. I've gotten a little more familiar with these command line tools over the years and I really like them for scripting. But a lot of times I, I look things up. Actually to the frustration of my friend group. They expect me to have all this stuff memorized, but I do not. All right, so now we've got all the permissions set up and we should be able to verify that Nextcloud is up and running, which is 192.168.8. Nextcloud. bit of a post note here. I went through a whole bunch of processes from reconfiguring the permissions of the files to rebooting Apache to checking Apache settings, installing all kinds of other PHP packages, and really the entire problem caused by Nextcloud not loading was if you look here I have an uppercase N for Nextcloud. If I change that to a lowercase it'll load up just fine. And it's just really simple whenever you're doing anything technical pay really close attention to the details because in a lot of cases your casing will have an impact and every little action you take can have an impact on the success or failure of what you're doing and it's better to check those little things rather than going through and modifying the permissions of your entire Nextcloud folder only to realize that later on you have to reset all of the permissions uh, either by redeploying the Nextcloud files or by going through and actually just restoring the previous permissions. Rather than take you through those steps, I'm just showing you what the solution was because it was about five to ten minutes of nothing. So now that Nextcloud is up and running, what you need to do is database user is whatever your database user was. So say for this dude, it would be ncdb user at localhost identified by your password here. So you just do database user database password, your password here, and then whatever your next, next cloud database name is. I'm going to go ahead and fill this out and then log in and kind of give you an idea of, of what's going on once you complete the login. Just hopping in here with a comment. When you're doing this setup, if you're just setting this up as a cloud server, you can go ahead and uncheck this install recommended apps. It will speed up how quickly Nextcloud will install and it won't include things like email services. When you get in there, there are these things called apps that you can install and you can customize your email server if that's what you want to do with your setup. But in my case, I don't really want to do that, so I'm just going to leave that unchecked because I just want this as a cloud server for now. Okay, once your config is done, you can set this up. Now you know my username. My password is really long, so it's going to be hard to brute force. Nextcloud Hub. 
you can go ahead and go through here. You can see that Nextcloud automatically comes with things like the manual, reasons for using Nextcloud. If you want this to be available from off your network, this is kind of the important thing and why you would want to use Nextcloud to begin with is to access your network. You're going to need to set port forwarding. Now in my case, uh, when I go 192.168.1.8, it takes me here from my external network, but it doesn't take me there from the internet. And the reason is, e even if I set port forwarding for port 80 to this Raspberry Pi, it won't do anything because my ISP is blocked port 80. So we're going to need to modify Apache 2 so that it forwards to a different port, and then we're going to need to modify Nextcloud so that it listens to the port. Actually, Nextcloud probably isn't necessary. It looks like it's in Etsy, Apache 2, ports.comp. When you go around the internet, people are going to tell you, oh, it's always in a different folder. It's not always. Apache 2. Yes, I use Nano. Yeah, I know it's lame. I haven't really had the need to learn VI. So we're going to listen to port, and then I have to use the top bar. So we're going to do 8080. And then I want to save modified changes. Now, to see if this works, I'm going to need to find out what my public IP address is. I need to extend that above where you can see where I'm going. And actually, I'm going to need to restart Apache. sudo service. OK, sudo service Apache to restart. And Apache should restart. So I think that means I can do the port I want to go to. So it's going to look like this. So it's going to be first part of your IP address, second part, third, fourth, semicolon 8080 forward slash nextcloud. We're going to see if this works. Site cannot be reached. Oh, of course it's not working. So what I'm going to do now is I just fired up a VPN. And so I am no longer connected to my internal network. I'm going out to a server somewhere else in the country because I'm using a US server. And then I'm bouncing back and pinging my home address to see if this works. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my public IP address and then port 8080 to see if it's handing me off to the Apache server the way I would expect. It's not. Okay, so I'm going to check my for port forwarding settings. So that was the problem. I thought that my Raspberry Pi changed ports or changed IP addresses on the local network earlier, so I changed the address in the local network. But it turned out that was the wrong device. Just uh, hardware issues. I was trying to see if I could connect a USB-C in between the power socket and the Raspberry Pi to get additional USB ports. But that did not work very well. So now I'm going to fire up the VPN, connect to a US server again, minimize latency. So if I do my IP address, port 8080, so like this, just, oh, whoops, no, don't do that. So just that, I get access to the Apache web page. That's your really simple test. You want to make sure that you're at least getting Apache if you can't connect to Nextcloud. Now I'm going to drop Nextcloud here at the end. 
So it looks like it's an untrusted domain. It actually makes sense that there's that it's not showing up as a trusted domain. When you're connected to VPN, you will not have access to your local network. In fact, you might lose access to Putty altogether. I'm just gonna close down that session. This is in bear www html so the file you want to go to is config In this file, you'll see that there are various ways that you can get in here from the external internet. And the way that you do that for your trusted domain so that you don't get that error I just got was by putting in the web address you want right here. So you have your URL dot whatever. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause the video so that you can't see what my domain is, again, to prevent DDoS attacks. And then we're going to see if we can get rid of this error, access through an untrusted domain. See you in a second. Voila. Everything worked out, so I'm just going to log in with my permissions and then give you a quick preview of what's going on in the site. All right, so we're in. One of the first things you're probably going to want to do is to create new user. Let's see if I can drop this down a little bit lower so you can see everything on the screen. So you've got new users. And then you have, you can create a user just like that. Alfred, I don't know an Alfred. Password among one million most common ones. Just because I type in password, it rejects it. How intelligent. So. We have this all set up. Oh, that's interesting. I can set up limits to user accounts. That's actually good information. Now I can add a group. All users. And there's no users here. I can edit this and then set the user to all users and then I can set my profile to all users as well. This way you can manage group permissions and you can assign specific folders to friends and family to where there's folders where you can share podcasts with each other or whatever you want to do with your personal cloud. And then other folders that are actually private so that only they have access to those accounts. And the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to go into apps. And we're going to install external storage support. OK, external storage support. We're going to go ahead and enable this. What this is going to do is it's going to give us an option down in the settings. So if you go to settings, this external storage is here. This one doesn't work. You want to go down here and external storage is when you hook up external hard drives, you're going to do it right here in this section. And uh, but before we do that, we're going to need to set up Open Media Vault and I think I'll do a different video for that because this one's running a little bit long and I'm starting to get kind of tired. 
but this is where you manage your external storage drives. I will need to change my username. This was the username I was planning on using for my primary for um, admin access, but I'm going to have to change all my usernames so that you don't have access once these videos are released. But we kind of, uh, I'll just leave it here and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.